Hello. In the previous lecture, we covered the second order circuits. Specifically, we learned how to find the differential equations for second order circuits using the direct method and operator method. And we also found the solution of the second order circuits for the overdamped case. Now we will today learn how to find the response of these circuits for the critically damped and underdamped cases. Specifically, we will find the critically damped and underdamped responses of parallel RLC circuits today. Previously, we learned that the differential equation for a parallel RLC branch can be written as second derivative of V plus 2 alpha times first derivative of V plus omega 0 squared times Vt is equal to 0. And here alpha is the damping factor and omega 0 is the resonant frequency. And for the specific circuit here, we have alpha is equal to 1 over 2 RC and omega 0 squared is equal to 1 over LC. And accordingly, we can find the roots of the characteristic equation as S12 is equal to minus alpha plus minus square root of alpha squared minus omega 0 squared. And here we can see that depending on the values of alpha and omega 0, we might have three different responses and three different solution types for the S1 and S2. We can have two real and distinct roots when alpha squared is uh, greater than omega 0 squared and this is the overdamped response. We can have two real roots which are overlapping. This is the critically damped response. And we can have two complex roots when alpha squared is less than omega 0 squared and then we have the underdamped response with oscillations. Here we see the visual illustrations of the underdamped, critical damped and overdamped responses for a step input. And as you can see in the underdamped case, we have oscillations and an initial overshoot. The critical damped case is the fastest response of the system without having oscillations. And the overdamped response is, as the name over implies, a sluggish, slower response than the other ones. Now, a special case occurs when alpha squared is equal to omega 0 squared and S1 becomes equal to S2. And in this case, we might again suggest the solution B natural response is equal to A1 times E to the S1T plus A2 times E to the S1T. However, here I can just uh, collect the terms A1 and A2 and write this as A3 times E to the S1T. As you can see, even though we will have two different initial conditions for the circuit, we have only one free parameter A3 here. And therefore, this solution will not work. So in this case, let us propose the following solution and see whether that works. V natural is equal to A1 times T plus A2 times E to the S1T. Let us try this proposed solution in a parallel circuit branch with L is equal to 1 Henry, R is equal to 1 ohms. The capacitor value is 1 over 4 farads and the initial conditions V0 is equal to 5 volts and I0 is equal to minus 6 amperes. Characteristic equation for the parallel RLC branch is given by S squared plus 1 over RC times S plus 1 over LC is equal to 0. R is equal to 1, C is equal to 1 over 4 farads, therefore this 1 over RC term becomes 4 and 1 over LC similarly becomes uh, 4 as well. So therefore, I can write uh, the characteristic equation as S squared plus 4S plus 4 is equal to 0. And when I solve this, S12 is equal to minus 4 plus minus uh, 16 minus 16 divided by 2. I end up with S1 over S2 is equal to minus 2. So I have two roots which are overlapping. And now we will try to find A1 and A2 using the initial condition V0 
and equation 1. So let's do it together. Vn0 is equal to A1 times T is equal to 0 plus A2 times E to the 0. And from here I see Vn0 is equal to simply A2. And the initial condition given for it is equal to 5 volts. And therefore A2 is equal to 5. That was easy. Now I need to do something in order to find the A1. I already found A2 is equal to 5. Now I will use the natural response again in order to find A1. And I am taking the first derivative of the natural response and I have this expression 2. If I take the value of this expression at t is equal to 0, I end up with this. e to the minus 2t will become 1 at t is equal to 0. This expression will become 0 because of this t. And this expression, e to the minus 2t is 1 as well. So according to this, a1 minus 2a2, which is equal to a1 minus 10. And now I will need to write another equation. And for that, I am using the KCL equation for the top node at t is equal to 0 again. This expression with the integral will go to 0 because uh, we are taking this integral from 0 to 0. And accordingly, I have 1 over 4 times a1 minus 10 because dv0 dt I found here as a1 minus 10 plus 5 over r. r is equal to 1, so I will not divide it by 1 plus i0, i0 is minus 6, is equal to 0. From here, I get a1 minus 10 is equal to 4, and accordingly, a1 is equal to 14. By finding this, I completed the solution of my problem, v n of t, basically the natural response of the circuit, will be equal to 14t, plus 5 times e to the minus 2t. And this is my final solution. Now, let us have a look at the underdamped response of a parallel RLC branch. In this case, alpha squared is less than omega 0 squared, and the roots of the characteristic equation are, are complex. So in other words, S1, S2 is equal to minus alpha plus minus square root of alpha square minus omega 0 squared. However, here alpha squared is less than omega 0 squared and we have the square root of a negative quantity. And therefore, our roots become S1, 2 is equal to minus alpha plus minus J square root of omega 0 squared minus alpha squared. So here J is the square root of minus 1. We define omega d is equal to square root of omega 0 square minus alpha square as the damped resonant frequency. And alpha is the damping coefficient. The natural response of such a circuit will have a complex exponential form. Here we have e to the minus alpha t times in parentheses, a1 times e to the j omega dt plus a2 times e to the minus j omega dt. Now we will figure out how to find a1 and a2 in this equation. Here we will use Euler's identity, which is e to the j omega t is equal to cosine omega t plus j times sine omega t. In other words, in a complex exponential term here, we have one cosine and one sine function, but the sine function is a complex function. In order to prove Euler's identity, you can take the Taylor series expansion of e to the j omega t, the Taylor series expansion of cosine omega t and j sine omega t, and you will see that the Taylor series expansions of cosine omega t plus j sine omega t, if we add them, we end up with the Taylor series expansion of e to the j omega t. Now, if you write the natural response equation using the Euler's identity, 
we just write each exponential term using this cosine and sine terms and accordingly we end up with this expression v nature is, is equal to e to the minus alpha t in parentheses a1 plus a2 times cosine omega dt plus j times a1 minus a2 times sine omega dt now accordingly we can define a1 plus a2 as b1 and a1 minus a2 as b2 and therefore we can find them again using initial conditions easily all right like how we will find uh, b1 and b2 b1 is easy i evaluate this expression at t is equal to zero e to the minus zero is equal to one cosine zero is one sine zero is zero therefore v0 and is equal to b1 and in order to find b2 firstly we do the same trick which we were doing for the other cases we were taking the time derivative of the natural response with respect to time and we end up with this expression here and at t is equal to zero when we evaluate this expression obviously this will go to become one then cosine omega dt will be one sine part will be zero again and therefore i will have the first derivative of natural response at t is equal to zero is equal to this term here and for the rlc branch we just had the kcl at the top node given by this equation at t is equal to zero we can calculate dv0 over dt as this and accordingly since i just know this value from the initial conditions here i can solve this equation because i also know the b1 value accordingly b2 is equal to 1 over omega d in parentheses alpha b1 minus b0 over rc minus i0 over c this way i found also the b2 value and i conclude the solution of my problem all right for the parallel rlc branch we will need to find the natural response vn for t greater than zero and we are being provided the parameters of the system r is equal to 25 over 3 ohms l is equal to 0 0.1 henry c is equal to 1 millifarads v0 the initial voltage of the capacitor is equal to 10 volts and i0 the initial current uh, through the inductor is minus 0 0.6 amperes and you should always remember that for this rlc branch we could have had depending on the parameter values of r l and c under damped over damped or critically damped responses now let's write the characteristic equation for the circuit all right the characteristic equation which we have found for the parallel rlc branch is s squared plus one over rc times s plus one over lc you can derive it as well but over time for the series and parallel rlc branches you should uh, memorize these you will end up memorizing them s squared plus one over no i will not write here one because we have 25 over three it will become three over 25 times 10 to the minus 3 s plus 1 over 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to 0 i can write this further as s squared plus 120 s plus 10,000 is equal to 0 and i can solve this as using this quadratic equation minus 120 plus minus in the square root of 14,400 minus 40,000 divided by 2 obviously the square root will be a complex quantity because it is uh, taking the square root of a minus quantity so s1 2 is equal to minus 60 plus minus j 80 and here i found this and since this is a complex conjugate roots of the characteristic equation we will have an under damped response now we can just propose the solution for the under damped response 
and use the initial conditions and all the tricks which we have learned so far in order to find the B1 and B2 constants. All right, the response of the system will be in this form. Vn is equal to e to the minus alpha t times uh, B1 cosine omega dt plus B2 times sine omega dt. And in order to find this, we need to find alpha and omega d, and we had found them earlier. Alpha is equal to 1 over 2 rc, and omega d is square root of uh, omega 0 squared minus alpha squared. And we had found omega 0 squared as uh, 1 over lc before. So let us do some uh, algebra and find those values. Alpha will be equal to 1 over 2 rc. This will be accordingly 3 over 2 times 25 times uh, 10 to the minus 3. And it will be 3000 divided by 50. It will be 60. Then uh, omega 0 squared is equal to 1 over LC. And this will be 1 over 0 0.1 times uh, 10 to the minus 3. And this is accordingly equal to... If I am not wrong, 10,000. And according to, I can calculate the damped resonance frequency as omega d, which is square root of 10,000 minus alpha squared. Alpha squared will be 60 squared, and the resulting result uh, will be 10,000 minus 3,600 is equal to 6,400, and the square root of it, 80. And accordingly, I can write the V natural response with respect to the time is equal to e to the minus alpha 60 t. That will be the exponential decay of the general form. And then B1, still an unknown, times cosine 80 t plus B2 times sine 80 t. So we will have some type of uh, sinusoidal and uh, cosine uh, which get added and which will be multiplied with some type of exponential decay. In general, most probably the response for Vn will be following some type of exponential envelope and inside that envelope, depending on initial conditions, will be having some type of oscillating decay of this form. But we will see that when we find B1 and B2 and finally draw the system behavior, finally how that curve will look like. But this is my educated guess. So now, how will we find B1 and B2? Let's do that. All right, finding B1 is easy. I write Bn0 is equal to e to the minus uh, 0 times uh, B1 times uh, cosine 0 plus B2 times sine 0. And accordingly, this term becomes 0. This term becomes 1. Cosine 0 is equal to 1. Therefore, I have Bn0 is equal to B1, which is equal to by the initial condition given here to 10. So I found B1 easily. Now I need to find B2. And for that, I will do the simple trick of taking the derivative with respect to time, taking the derivative of Vn with respect to time, and uh, using this other initial condition as well. All right, let's take this derivative. dVnt over dt is equal to e to the minus 60t times uh, 80 minus 80 b1 times sine 80t plus 80 b2 times cosine 80t plus not plus minus minus 60 e to the minus 60t times uh, b1 times cosine 80 t plus b2 times sine 80 t. Now you should understand why you need to study calculus very well in order to succeed in this electrical circuits course. dvn0 over dt will be equal to all of these terms uh, will be with the 
at t is equal to 0, it will be 1. This term is 1. All the sine terms become 0. All the sine terms become 0. Cosine terms become 1. Cosine terms become 1. Accordingly, I end up with 80 times B2 minus 60 times B1. However, I know B1, so accordingly, this becomes uh, 80 B2 minus 600. So this is my equation which relates the first derivative of the voltage at t is equal to zero to the initial conditions. Now I will just write one more equation and finalize uh, the solution. Recall we had found this expression previously for the initial conditions and dv zero over dt is equal to 80 times B2 minus 600, which is equal to minus uh, V0 minus 10 times divided by RC, which is 120, minus minus plus plus 0 0.6 divided by C, so times 1000. And accordingly, when I solve this, I end up with 80 B2 is equal to 600 minus 1200 uh, plus 600. And from here, <laughs> interestingly, B2 is equal to 0. Now I also found B2 and completed the solution of my question. So B1 is equal to 10. So instead of this B1, I can write 10. And instead of B2, I can write 0. So accordingly, V and T is equal to e to the minus 60T times 10 times cosine 80T. So this is my final expression for this question.